In the speculations over the digital, with its binary and fluid nature, it is not surprising that the Tao is often borrowed from Oriental philosophy as a parallel. This is a metaphysical and poetic way of thinking and being. It is surprising however that although there is a certain amount of speculation of a, shall we say, pragmatic nature as well, that the Confucian systems are not cited as frequently, if at all. It is as if the virtual is being sold as a yin without a yang, or vice versa. Perhaps the Confucian aspect is so established that we should not see the wood for the trees. If the virtual is metaphysical, poetic and art we should not forget that the digital had previously been the domain of the other polarity. I believe that the analogies of memory, dreams, imagination and poetry are all valid with regards virtual reality and all are the familiar and traditional territory of the artist whatever the medium. Despite contemporary attempts to shift the role of the artist i.e. that art is just another job, and thereby shift the notion of art into line with more commercial and corporate values, the eternal return of the artist will be unchanged. Even if art was formerly focused on the appearance of things and their representation, and now it's concerned with systems and coming into being and follows the five-fold path of connectivity, immersion, interaction, transformation and emergence, always in flux, unstable in structure, undecided in form, uncertain in outcome. A Scott, an interfacial glossary. The human condition is still one of life and death. Mortality and transience. The real work of any artist will still be about the tragic realization and expression of love and loss, practically, conceptually and virtually, and will not be recompensed, you are paid to work for others not to work for yourself. There are of course, as Graves would have it, more Apollonian strategies. Death in life in the private domain, life and death in the public. A struggle and inevitably a compromise, if it can be negotiated, between the conscience and the consensus and the filling out of the middle ground. It will be the same old story. Virtual reality may see the birth of a new world but it will be another dead world. We have gone beyond the age of romance and the heroism of the private evolution and failed to achieve the impossible. All that remains is to achieve a simulated equivalent of success and excess in a public domain that cannot either be heroic or romantic, except nostalgically and fictitiously, and is beyond any sentimental or spiritual value. The something has been replaced by the nothing. We are the dead. The digital world will be the book of the dead. It is the all-new Orphic mystery and our love will be turned to stone as we dig it up and piece it together. There is nothing to search for but an oblivion that is delayed through distraction. If we look through the mist of time we are all playing doom. When art becomes independent, represents its world in dazzling colors, a moment of life has grown old and it cannot be rejuvenated with dazzling colors. It can only be evoked in remembrance. The greatness of art only begins to appear at the dusk of life. Guideboard, The Society of the Spectacle. P71. But perhaps virtual reality like drugs promises a ready made transcendence and we will not have to wait for the dusk of life as there will no longer be a dusk or a dawn of life in asynchronous cyberspace, and if that's the case, who cares? It's all relative, isn't it? I guess we'll just have to evolve beyond the body. Maybe we can do it in a quantum leap. Meanwhile, the excessive mediation of the social, which is carried out through the machinery of the media, increases the intensity of our alienation from the body by fixating the flow of attention on information rather than on direct experience. In this sense the media serves a religious or priestly role, appearing to offer us a way out of the body by redefining spirit as information. The essence of information is the image, the sacral and iconic data complex which usurps the primacy of the material bodily principle as the vehicle of incarnation, replacing it with a fleshless ecstasis beyond corruption. Consciousness becomes something which can be downloaded, excised from the matrix of animality and immortalized as information. No longer ghost in the machine, but machine as ghost, machine as holy ghost, ultimate mediator, which will translate us from our mayfly corpses to a pleroma of light. Virtual reality as cybernosis. Jack in, leave Mother Earth behind forever.